We often consider structure to be something physical, something that we can touch. Stack some bricks together and you can build a house. The repeated pattern of bricks can be recognized in this final structure of the house. These are structures built out of physical things in space. We take time as something ephemeral, something that cannot be touched, something that is always changing. What if these structures exist in time as well, and we can repeatedly stack these like bricks? Cycles of time are the equivalent of physical structures in space built in time. One man spent the best part of his life examining a very strange phenomena that led him down a path to uncover a cycle of time that seems to dominate almost every system we have, be it chemical, biological or radioactive. Simon Schnoll was a biochemist researching muscle protein. He was a very meticulous experimenter, but while he was running his experiments, he noticed that certain chemical reaction rates would occur in groups of two numbers with a very clear gap in the middle. Most experiments, when they are performed, produce a bell curve, with the most common values occurring in the middle, and then this drops off quickly as you reach the more extreme values, producing what looks like a bell-shaped curve. What Schnoll discovered was that there seems to be a gap between where the values would not appear. For example, if he ran his experiment and expected the peak to be around 50, he found values at 45 and 55, but none at 50. Thinking it was an experimental error, he repeated these experiments many times under the same conditions, but the same results kept appearing. Where you would expect the results to smooth out, his results always looked peaky and random. But when he examined the data across all his repeats, he saw these peaks very often appeared in the same place. These peaked patterns would tend to hold for several days running. He felt that the peaks he was seeing and the fact that they would repeat for days on end was very important and not an artifact of error. In any normal experiment, you would never expect the data to produce a smooth bell curve. It is perfectly normal to see random peaks, but if you repeat the experiment often enough, these peaks should smooth out. What Schnoll discovered was that these peaks seem to occur at non-random intervals. He was therefore arguing that by averaging out the data, we are missing information that is vitally important to these experiments. The results intrigued him so much it became a life quest to try and understand if these patterns occurred elsewhere and what might be causing them. Initially he looked at biological systems and discovered that similar patterns kept occurring, so he turned to chemical systems and discovered the same thing. He also discovered this in radioactive decay. There was no hiding from this effect. What is most remarkable is that this pattern would even occur across totally different experiments. In the end, he identified some very significant cycles, which included the stellar day, the lunar day, the lunar month, the calendar year, the stellar year, and half the solar year. Is this a new type of astrology? Is there any connection to the ancient astrology? Many people have studied the relationship between various cycles and found connections. First up is the length of day variation. Now, although we might think that the length of the day is fairly fixed, there is actually a very small variation of about 0.1 milliseconds. And when they examined this over an extended period of time, they identified a 5.9 year cycle. Someone then took this and compared the measurements of Newton's gravitational constant to the length of day measurement and they attempted to use a sine curve as their best approximate fit. It is not a great fit, and there aren't many data points, but again, they were able to identify a 5.9 year cycle. Now in their paper, they attempt to argue that this could be due to the fluid core motions and the inner core coupling causing the periodicity, but that only connects the length of day variations to the changes in big G. What this cannot explain is why there are variations in the length of day in the first place. Now if we now turn our attention to neutrons, we know that they will decay within a very short time frame. There are two different methods of measuring this decay rate, the bottle method and the beam method. 
And effectively, you are examining how many neutrons remain after a certain period of time. And it's fair to assume that the decay rate should be identical in each of these methods. Yet the two experiments yield very different results and vary by about 1%. Now this may not sound like it's a lot, but in terms of experimental error, this is huge and equates to about 8 seconds difference. Now, Eugene Bagashov took some more recent measurements from various papers and plotted the same sign curve as before. And you could question the dates that were used, but nonetheless, there is a pattern, and this pattern is the same 5.9 year pattern that we saw in the previous two examples. And that may indicate that the difference is more than just coincidence. So where might this 5.9 years come from? Now it turns out that it is half of the orbit period of Jupiter. The connection has to be more complex than simply the connection between Earth and Jupiter, as Earth travels faster than Jupiter, so we would pass through the halfway point in Jupiter's orbit more often than the 5.9 years. Eugene took the data from the graph and worked out based on the dates where Jupiter was in its orbit and plotted it. What is interesting when you do this is that the curve is at its maximum when Jupiter crosses the plane of the galaxy, and it is at its minimum when it is furthest away from this plane. So is it possible that Jupiter's orbit causes a displacement in the Sun which has a knock-on effect here on Earth? Does the alignment of the galactic center cause an additional tug meaning it would happen every 5.9 years? Is there some other mechanism that can account for these changes at the points on the graph? Could alignment of the planets play a much more important role than we had previously thought? The flux of solar neutrinos also fluctuates, but not by 5.9 years, but instead by 26 months, and scientists cannot explain this periodicity. Again, Eugene examined various planets and found that you can match this time frame to the time it takes Mars to return to the same position in its orbit relative to Earth. Is the combined mass of these enough to displace the Sun? and therefore cause this variation in the solar neutrino flux. Still further analysis of the data of the solar neutrinos by other scientists yields further cycles, and one of the stronger cycles is about 30 days, but they attempt to explain it with a cycle within a current solar cycle. Is this linked to the idea of the zodiacs as these change every month as well? When we examine both alpha and beta decay rates, these patterns seem to appear as well. Their decay rate is not constant but fluctuates, and one paper seems to suggest that this variation in the decay rate might actually be linked to the neutrino flux variations from the Sun. Modern science likes to paint the picture of a constant, non changing world with constants and decay rates set in statistical stone. We look at the art of astrology as a throwback to some ancient ritual that has no meaning. Yet here we are, able to discover that the truth about our real universe is far stranger than we would like to admit, and that there are many more cycles which impact many different systems. Astrology pays great significance to where the planets are, and it would appear that this may indeed be what we need to pay more attention to. Modern astrology attempts to determine outcomes for a person based on when they were born and the constellations and position of the planets. Nowadays it is considered pseudoscience, but in the past it was considered a study in its own right, and tended to focus more on predicting the season, crops and yields, rather than that of an individual. Consider that the science of astrology has been passed on from our ancient ancestors, and we often regard this as a mere ritual, but the more we uncover, the more we are realising that our ancient ancestors knew far more about the mechanics of the heavens and our universe than probably we do. Many aspects of this tradition have probably been distorted through the ages into what we know today as astrology. We also readily dismiss any notion of timescales longer than a few years. The Yuga Cycle specifically talks about changes to the human consciousness and who is to say that the effects that we have talked about do not apply on much longer timescales as well? Consider for a moment our motion around Sirius. Every 25,000 years, 
and then our motion around Arcturus every 550,000 years, and then our motion around the Pleiades around every 26 million years. Could these motions and interactions with the surroundings have a noticeable effect on systems both living and non-living? As always, be brave, be curious, the truth is waiting for us. Until next time.